Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video, it's gonna be a shorter one because I've been waiting forever to capture this on video to show it with you guys. I've tried several times and I just haven't been able to. So this is a weird phenomenon that happens on some of the ports when I'm flowing them. And it only ever does it on my signs bench. And I wanna show that weird event today. And you might be saying, well, what heads are these and what are you doing? These are actually a trick flow, small block Mopar heads. Now don't stop watching just yet because this design of this wing is in small block Chevys and in LSs and it does pretty much the same effect. I only ever see this happen on heads that have the wing facing that direction. In other words, towards the wall here. Instead of having it straight or this way, only when it faces that way does this phenomenon happen. And I'm gonna show you on video what's gonna happen. Now you might be like, whoa, can you tell us about these small block Mopar heads? Yes, today the video I was going to do was a whole product review of this head. I just don't have time. I'm already way late in the day and should have had more accomplished. Things just get behind me sometimes. Remember, I don't make my money primarily off YouTube. I make it off of working on cylinder heads and that sort of stuff. So you'll get a video on these, just not today. But it's a very nice head. It's a Trick Flow 190cc CNC ported head. Very nice head. And here's what is going to happen. And I only ever see it with this vein facing that way. What I'm gonna do is I have, the, I have it open, the dial indicator set up at 600 thousandths lift. And what you're gonna see is flow is gonna show up here, but this red screen doesn't show really well. But you're gonna see it go like 306, 309, something around that, right? And what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to zoom in over here on my digital screen. And you're gonna see the flow pop up right there. And what's gonna happen is, I'm just gonna take my hand like this, and I'm just gonna slap the port and pull it away. And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let the port recover, and I'm gonna come back and show you the flow numbers again. And what you're gonna see is it's gonna drop. It will go from 306, 309 down to 300. Now my hand's not in the way blocking it. You'll see, my hand will be out of the way. It will never come back up to that 306, 309 range. Because something with this wing and the way it affects airflow, it's kind of like an air manipulation device. It um, jacks up the numbers and it looks really good until you have smallest change in the airspeed or the port flow through the port. Then it gets, the air gets disrupted, it loses where it's attached and you'll see the flow drop. Now, before you think, well, that's bad, I'm just showing you this because I did talk to TripFlow about this head and they said that I asked them specifically, why do you have the wing facing this direction? And because they're not the only ones. AFR on their small block Chevy has that wing facing that direction. So does LS engines. So does some small block Fords do as well. Um, but I asked them why they did it. And they said, well, we do R&D. And they tried this way. And then they did a dyno test. And they tried it the normal way. And this way it made more power. So that's what they've stuck with. Now, I didn't ask to see the result. I mean, I don't think that they would even share them if I wanted but um, I just have to go with what the word and if they said that's what happened and it's what happened, but on the flow bench, it really does weird stuff. It looks really, really great until you stop the flow and you might be like, well, that doesn't represent an engine at all. It absolutely does. The minute you close that valve on a running engine, the same thing happens. The air stops and then it bounces back in a reflection wave. So this is, a flow bench is a steady state device. It's just pulling air at a constant, 28 inches of vacuum because this has a digital controller on there. It always maintains 28 inches of vacuum. Um, so I don't have to turn the dials in other words to get to 28. It's going to maintain 28. So the minute I stop the airflow, it's just like the valve closing. So this process that you're about to see is the same thing that happens on a running engine. Now, here's what's weird. Another weird fact. It will not do it on my Superflow 750. And you're like, what are you talking about? Shouldn't they do the same? No. The Science Bench has way more flow motors and or vacuum motors in it than the Superflow. The other thing is it's way, way faster at responding. And what I mean by this is when I open a valve, it instantly is holding 28 inches. If I do that on a Superflow, it takes a while to spool up. And since it's taking too long to spool up, you don't get to capture the same event because it's gradually increasing the airflow. It never does a dramatic change like the signs does. And that's why I like this bench better because it's so much more responsive. It will show a little problem with the head, but that bench 
we'll just ignore because it's takes it's gradually building up speed instead of violently doing it like it would be closer to what's in a real engine. So enough being said, let's watch it. So I'm gonna kick it on. You hear it'll get a little loud. Um, you'll see here, I'll show you the flow numbers. I'll try to show over there and then I'm just gonna boop and go back to the flow numbers. So let me kick it on. As you can tell, that's what happens. It won't recover. So you might be asking yourself, well, why does that happen? Like I said before, it's something with this wing. Once it gets slightly out of control, it can't maintain the air speeds. Um, it, the air can't stay attached and boom, it drops. We're talking like a, that was almost a 10 CFM drop just doing that. No matter what, it won't happen. Here's the other thing. You can see it also when you're flowing ahead. Sometimes when you're flowing ahead, it will hit 600. Like at 600, you hit 309 or whatever. You go to 700, it might, it'll drop down like, say, 300. And then at 800, it might go 297. Well, then if you try backing up your dial indicator while you're flowing the head, and you go back to 600, it will no longer read like 309 when it was before. It read what it did there, like 297. For whatever reason, like I said, I think it's the air not being able to stay attached. It does in a steady state, but the minute you disrupt it, it will not. Um, it seems really, really prevalent with the wings facing this direction. So it doesn't mean that they're wrong, I'm just showing you something weird that happens with those. And you would never spot it um, if you just hadn't, if you just always test on a Superflow with that, with its motor controller, you would never see it. It had to happen from that. So anyway, that's something weird I wanted to show with you, uh, just something for fun. It doesn't mean this head's bad, don't take it that way. Because like I said, they're not the only ones that have done it. This is the only one I've been able to capture on camera. Um, but don't think it's bad because they said they've done R&D and it makes more power. I got to trust them. But um, anyway, I want to show you that, something weird. And uh, guys, remember, I do not port cast iron heads. I am no Superman. You guys take care.